Hello, I'm Toya. And I'm Robert. And this is our Upbeat Moments. Well, would you like to know my upbeat moment this oh, week? Oh, tell us, you superstar. All right, my main upbeat moment is I am the awful Pong of Mars. Yes, this is Supermind 3, which is an audio science fiction radio comedy. And I've been playing Lady Whitcomb in this since 2020, when I did the first series. And it's been commissioned many times since. And now you are the great Pong in it. Well, I must say I've been having some considerable fun doing this. I haven't, I believe, done any real acting for uh, ever. Really? Have you never acted? Not really. Well, you've picked it up really well. Well, I mean, Alice in Wonderland at primary school in a puppet presentation doesn't quite count, does it? Dear? Okay, well, I've been rehearsing with you all week just so that you speak it because it's very different speaking lines to reading lines. So this is our rehearsal. Good. Hello, we're having an upbeat moment. I am making my debut in the starring role as a radio actor. In series three, a supermind. Now, do you know why I've got you standing? You're about to tell me, do Okay, well, we're in the studio tomorrow to record all 10 episodes of this audio series. Now, if you stand, you can use your diaphragm. Now, sometimes when I go into the studio to do a voiceover for a TV advert, they put a chair out for me and I have to read something in 20 seconds that is more than three sentences. It's virtually impossible to do when you're sitting down. So because you're standing... OK, so Good. we're going to go in from here. Good. Now, who are you? I am the insufferable Pong, tyrannic ruler of Mars. And what I like is this has kind of been specifically written for you, which I think is fabulous. I'm not sure I'm flattered, dear. Well, the writer Nick Ford and the director Barnaby, who's Eaton Jones, who's such a good friend, um, they have always had you in mind for this. OK. Good. Well, here, here we I go. go then. Yes, well, if we could just move on from lawnmower. Time is passing, and some of us have running an interplanetary empire, murdering dissident life forms, and maintaining a reputation for butchery and bad hair choices. Is he always like this? Oh, most of the time, oh, yes. With no yes, space dollars. Yes, 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 you've made your plight quite clear. In Azura's absence, I shall leave you, Sergeant Nigel, here. So there you go. All right. Sci-fi. I'm getting psyched for this. And we get married in it. Martian Earthling. It is a marriage to acquire the planet Earth. A marriage of convenience. Do, 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 do. Well, there we are. And I must say, I'm very happy to be given pieces of remarkable advice from my little loving. Well, I didn't want you to get into the studio having not read out loud because the way you sort your breathing out yeah. is out loud. Yeah. And also, every week, every day that we've ran the script, because we've done it every day, you have changed, changed radically. Uh, not only as an actor and not only building a character quite naturally, but it's changed you. And I think part of it is you've, you're now thinking about how you speak. But what's beautiful about your character is your Dorset accent, which is an absolute winner. Now, when you think that we have just binge watched a series called Mary and George, yes. uh, which is a true story about Charles the first and, and uh, a mother and, and son that kind of infiltrated the palace. And who was it that had a Dorset accent? Was it Sir Francis Drake? No, it was Sir Walter Raleigh. And in real life, the Sir Walter Raleigh, who lived at Sherborne Castle in North Dorset, had a Dorset accent he never lost. And the same with you, O oh Rock God, who's travelled the world, who is worshipped in on every continent. Yes, dear. Well, I'll just interject. I've just recently received an invitation on my Facebook page to have the change in my dialect over time studied by one of the poster's students. And I will say 
that when I moved to New York in 1977, a lot of people really didn't understand what I was saying. And in addition, uh, there were characters who said to me, oh, I know where you come from, your accent is. And the main two was firstly Australian, yeah. and the second was South African. I get that. So what I did, I took greater care in enunciation with Americans so that they would understand what I was saying. I don't believe I've lost my Dorset accent. I do believe that when I get cross, it comes out a little more. You've not lost it, and it's it's very endearing, especially with you and your reputation. It's rather fabulous. John Wetton, and both John Wetton and Jack O'Jaxic, both Crimson uh, members and singers, um, tend to do impersonations of what they believe my accent is. And so do I, especially when we're in bed. Yes, dear. <laughs> now, since the subject has changed. I have one other upbeat moment. Oh! I took my baby to the films. Oh my goodness, June 2. Oh my goodness. This is the first time we've been to the cinema in four years, maybe a little more, prior lockdown. And what's a perfect film. Oh. I have never known two hours and 40 minutes just disappear so quickly. Perfect, perfect movie. In fact, we only saw it 24 hours ago and I want to see it again. This is so. Anyway, little lovey, what's your upbeatness here? Um, my upbeat moment, and it's generally all very upbeat presently because there's some lovely things going on, but I did the set list today for the Toya shows. So I have three kinds of Toya shows coming up over the festivals. I have Sign of the Times, which for me is quite a contemporary festival. It's got, it's got young kids on the bill and then me. Um, so I've done the set list for that so that I know that I will be introduced to many new people in that audience that day. And I'm on about fourth, which is a huge compliment um, on the main stage. And then there's the Rebellion Festival, which I've done many, many times. And I sent the set list to the band today. And I said, this is pure early days punk. Uh, and they're really excited. They just go, yeah, we can't wait to do these songs because they really are kind of, well, they're high energy and they're quite out there. And the arrangements are non-conformist with music conservatoire trained musicians. So they're very, very excited. And then I have also done the set list for Torchlight, which we did last year. Gorgeous, beautiful, gentle camping festival. Uh, and I've done that as well and added quite a lot of heavy metal to it. Well, excellent. So this has been really lovely to think in a Toya brain rather than a Toya and Robert brain. I love thinking in both. And if I had a preference, um, it's Toya and Robert because there's a support system there for me. I'm not just the kind of the central figure holding it all together. Um, what I love about working with you is you are there on stage with me. Yes, this is also true. Very upbeat moment. Excellent. So tomorrow we will have for you a trip down memory lane, a vintage Toya and Robert. We're getting ready to do our end of the month Toya and Robert, which is kind of going to be slightly April Fool's. We didn't do April Fool's last year. We will give away no more clues, dear. I will shut up. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and see you tomorrow. Lots of love from Toy. And from Robert. <laughs>